quite a bit on open source conferences. Is there someone who wants to do a lightning talk? This is the perfect moment to do a random lightning talk. You get five minutes, no slides, you can use a browser if you want to. Anyone wants to do a lightning talk? Yeah, Chris. Okay, lightning talk, perfect. We have a lightning talk from Chris. I have been working on a Godot plugin that integrates OpenXR into the Godot engine. And uh, yeah, with this plugin, we can run a game on Monado with our positional tracking that Jacob mentioned before. So here's our debug UI from Monado. And in the background on the right, you can see our controllers. I think I need to restart this. I think the camera doesn't reliably work. But I will just restart this and then it will work. Hopefully. Camera does not work. That's annoying. Let me try one last time. Looks good. Yeah. This works. Yes. Unfortunately, there is some kernel bug that throttles my laptop to 400 megahertz, but that should not matter. It is just a little bit laggy because of that. So. With this plugin, we can track the controllers. And this is the right one. Yeah, it works better if my laptop is not throttled to 400 megahertz. <laughs> but as you can see, the controllers are positionally tracked in Godot engine and I can use the buttons to teleport around. Yeah, but the tracking is very slow. I have a question. Is this using any proprietary software? <laughs> no, this is running on a full open source stack. The tracking works a lot better if your CPU is not throttled to 400 megahertz. <laughs> As you can see, my CPU speed is 400 megahertz. I can't help it. Why? Ask AMD or Asus, I guess. Perhaps there will be a BIOS update that fixes it. I don't know. Not really, no. But yeah, we, you have now the ability to develop your VR application with positionally tracked controllers. But that's basically my lightning talk. Um, let, me, let me introduce you to the other proje the project that I'm talking about at the GStreamer conference next week. Um, which is another side project that I, I have had running for a couple of years. I call it Arena, and 
It's a, a home entertainment system, like a, a Sonos system, where I have multiple computers spaced around the house, and they use the network to share a clock, and they can synchronize a clock across the network to millisecond precision, which is tight enough that you can now get every device in the house to play a single piece of audio according to a precise schedule. So when that one plays it out that speaker, that one plays it out that speaker, it sounds like a single unified stereo, but I don't have to run cables everywhere. It uses the Wi-Fi for surround sound. So that was Arena in 2015, or 2012, that was the original Arena. But then I had this other idea that I can use it as a home automation system. So I put microphones on every node, and now I can synchronize the capture of microphones across every node. And there's this thing you can do where if you have an array of microphones, you can use the arrival time of the sound at each microphone to do directional detection. And by spacing them around a house, I can do triangulation of the sound so I can locate the position that a person is standing in, or in theory. It's still in progress and starting to work, but it's a bit tricky. So then you ask the you say, hey, my house, turn on the lights, and it knows exactly where you're standing in the house. It knows which light is closest to you. You ask it to stop the music where you are or turn the volume down, it can do that. And so the idea is to make your house more aware of where you are when you ask it to do things and give it that extra piece of context. Um, there's also another piece of this project that uh, is very nascent and hardly works at all, which is you can only do this trick if you know where the nodes are in the house. So you, similar to the Rift calibration step to figure out where the cameras are, there is a piece of this where they play sounds at each other and encode little bits of messages in ultrasonics and then listen and they, because they know, they have this clock already on the network, they can know when that one sent it, when this one received it, they can measure the distance to each other and the direction to each other and they can form a little map of where they are and use that for their triangulation. So that is the Arena home automation system that I have as a, another side project under development. The end. <laughs>
seconds. That's fine. That's fine. Plenty of time. So like I said, just how does it work is you see just text uh, and it looks magic, but it's just text. So you can pragmatically modify it, even though it's visual content. And the little magic is you can actually use uh, DOM functions on it. Uh, so you can just set the attribute and the size just like you would modify a normal web page. So I actually go a little bit meta, so I explain the talk as an SVG, as a drawing, uh, and then, okay, it's too complicated, it's my poster, but then I can sequence it step by step. I go from the paper version to uh, the digital version, got my SVG, put it online, got my proper URL, and just embed it on any web page, like, for example, this very slide. Well, of course, you can go further. You can have like a timeline editor, so you can switch the different part of the elements. You can display them in whatever order you want. Uh, so yeah, you don't have to use random dumb stuck photos with like some dude with a uh, duck on his face. You can draw your own slide. You just have to use a piece of pen. Thank you. <laughs>